Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Skåne here in the south of Sweden and we're going to head up towards Helsingborg once again and revisit one of my favourite Swedish craft breweries. And if you're interested in New England hazy IPAs and uh, sour beers, then these guys are one of the ones that you definitely want to check out. So for this review, we're going to do what must be around review number 15 or something like that from Brewski Microbreggery. This one is the Triple Berry Pie coming in at 4% ABV and it's a Berliner Weisse with blueberries, raspberries, blackcurrant and vanilla added to it. So a few points to make about this beer actually. There's another version of this beer that comes in at 3.5% ABV that means that it can be sold in the supermarket as a folk soul. and for those of you watching outside of Sweden anything below 3.5% can be sold in the supermarkets but anything above that has to be sold in the state-owned Seistembo Lagat stores so there has been two different versions of this beer one of the curious things I noticed recently though and this was with Engel Quartersbreggery over in Kalmar they had their Blo Berliner which um, had a 3.6% version and a 3.5% version so I'm wondering if there are any sort of legal barriers with Seistembolaga. If it's below 3.5%, maybe you can't sell it in Seistembolaga, but if it's above that, you know, obviously you have to. So if any of you are watching from Sweden and you know the, the kind of legal terms of Seistembolaga, I'd be very curious to know whether you can sell anything below 3.5% because I do know that some of the, the technically non-alcohol beers, the Mikeler, um, Drinking in the Sun and of course the Brewdog Nanny State as well, those are sold in Seistembolaget but they are only 0.5%. Uh, so if some of you Swedes watching let me know what the, the actual legal deal behind that is, it would be really quite interesting to know. But basically I think Brewski have uh, done a slightly stronger version of this beer because it proved to be very popular and they wanted to sell it through Seistembolaget more widely. This one actually was one that had a lot of recommendations from you guys watching the channel so for all of you guys who've recommended this beer a huge thank you and you know you've got to give the people what you want so I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer I'm really curious to see how it turns out I don't review all that many Berlin Vices for you here on the channel but in Sweden there are some very good ones actually the I would recommend you check out the ones from Engel Quartos Brewery you've got Urebro Brewkus as well that are doing some interesting things and Brewski and Steve Berriots of course are doing some very interesting sour beers at the moment as well. You've also got Breakeriet in Landskrona here in Skåne too, so make sure you check out some of those Swedish breweries that I'm mentioning there. But yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we open up the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brewski Microbreggery before. No doubt you will see some more reviews from these guys in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is massively massively appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Brewski Microbreggery then so as I've told you before Brewski Microbreggery were founded back in 2014 in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden and the founders of the company are are Marcus Jalmerson, Johan Britson, Alfred Olsen and Robin Skoglin. And all of these guys were largely inspired to get into home brewing as a result of trying the West Coast American craft beers. So Marcus is the main brewing man at the company and he was originally associated with the High Nose brand of beer that was brewed up at the Hoganis Breggery. And some of those beers are still brewed there of course, they're a little bit hard to come by these days. But all of the Brewski beers are now brewed at their own brewery in Helsingborg, which you can find in the train yards just a little bit to the south of the main station. And uh, this brewery now has a capacity of around 100,000 litres of beer per month. So they're brewing around 1.2 million litres of beer per year from what I understand. In 2016 as well, well, they started their own festival which is called Brewskival. You've seen me do a little festival video for the one in 2019 which was great. Uh, the original one had over 40 different brewers and this has continued to expand year on year. I think there was somewhere in the region of 80 brewers at the last one that I was at from local 
uh, from locally rather, and from a little bit further afield. There was a lot of breweries from like America. I think the one that was from furthest away was like China or something like that. So they do get a hell of a lot of really interesting breweries in. Um, but they also used to open up their brewery once a month and called it Barsky. But they now have their own bar in Helsingborg, which you can find in the street running parallel to the main street. And uh, it goes by the same name, Barsky. They serve a kind of American take on ramen, if you like. The chef in the in the bar and restaurant is American and the ramen that they do is pretty damn nice and this opened up back in 2018 and as of November 2019 when I'm reviewing this beer for you they've produced 300 different types of beer according to Untapped so they are a very prolific brewery for having been around only about five years 300 beers is a pretty damn impressive output and I've noticed that there's more and more of these things appearing in Seistenbo uh, Lager in Sweden normally to get a few of the different ones you would have to go up to the Seistenbo Lager in Helsingborg itself but all of the beers from what I understand are now available through the order system in Seistenbolaga and there was a good few of them for a long time were only being exported as well and I think some of them are still only for export they do do a little bit of contract brewing over in America these days as well. Some of the Fieber series, which is really good, um, some of those are contract brewed uh, by breweries over in America, and that is a series that I definitely recommend that you try it if you get the chance. It's basically a sort of New England fruit IPA with a little bit of a slightly sour character to it as well. You've seen me review the, ma the, the mango favour and the uh, the passion favour on the channel, if I remember correctly. But those are probably the most well-known beers from Brewski. But pretty much anything you get from these guys is going to be really good. Probably my favourite beer that I've had from them so far was the Conan the Barbarian, which was either an 8 or a 9% um, Imperial New England IPA. And that's that still remains the best beer that I've had from these guys. So, um, yeah, make sure you check out some of these Brewski beers, particularly if you're interested in the hazy IPAs or the kind of Berliner Weisses and things like that. A very good brewery, particularly when it comes to adding fruit into beers and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Brewski for the moment. Hopefully I can get up to Helsingborg again sometime soon and film a little out and about video for you at their bar. That's been on the, uh, the cards for a little while so hopefully I can do that within the next few months and you can enjoy that as well. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up. As you can see, it's in one of these very tall kind of 330 milliliter cans, almost like a a Red Bull can, if you like. It's only quite recently that Brewski have began uh, or have begun putting their beers in these very tall, small cans. It was usually always the little stubby bottles before this. And um, I still actually have one review to publish from Brewski, the We're All Mad here, which is probably the last one I'll ever review from them in the stubby bottle. So you'll see that appear at some point. But like I told you at the start of the video, this one is a Berliner Weisse coming in at 4% ABV with blueberries, raspberries, black currants, and vanilla added to the brew. And it says that it's best before the 24th of September, 2021. I'm not sure whether this beer will remain in Seistenbolaget for quite a for quite a while, but I guess if it proves to be very popular, then probably it will stay there. You know, they'll go with their kind of best-selling beer. But there you can see the really nice artwork on this one, the typical sort of brewski style. And down here you can see the little brewski guy, which adorns all of their kind of merchandise and stuff like this. So um, yeah, really nicely presented beer this one. So without further ado, let's get it out and into the glass. Like I said, a 4% Berliner Weiss with um, what was it? blueberries, raspberries and black currants and vanilla added to the brew. So let's see how we get on with this one. As I said to you, I don't normally review all that many Berliner Weisses, but you know, there was quite a few people recommending that I have a go at this one. So, you know, we'll, we will try it. The Berliner Weisse for me, I do enjoy it, um, but you know, I just, this, I just don't review all that many of them. I maybe need to kind of explore this style a little bit more because if they're done very well, they can be really, really quite nice. But I mean, just look at the pour on this beer. You can see there's a solid half finger of a really kind of almost violet coloured head on this one, a really bright pink sort of violet colour there. If I shine the light through this beer, it's almost like a sort of red wine colour, a very kind of rich burgundy, a little bit like Hearts, Heart of Midlothian Football Club, they are kind of maroon shirts that they wear, a very rich maroon sort of red winey kind of colour this beer. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, you can see a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there, but you know, overall it looks pretty nice and nothing 
to be honest, very surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. These Berliner Weisses can be a whole host, uh, a whole myriad of different colours, to be honest with you. So to find one that's this sort of red winey colour isn't overly surprising. When you consider the fruits that are involved, raspberries, blueberries, black currants, you know, the blueberries and black currants are going to give it most of the colour actually. To be honest, it's maybe a little bit surprising that it is so red rather than anything else. But um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just to see how we get on. Incidentally, if you shine the light through this, you will see that it is completely hazy and that's not surprising from a beer that has its malt base based on wheat. So yeah. Oh, that aroma is absolutely lovely. So the thing you're going to notice about this straight away is the vanilla. Um, the vanilla jumps straight out of this one at you. Underneath that you can definitely smell a nice white bready wheaty kind of quality but it really does smell just like cake. I mean it smells straight up like whipped cream this beer. It's, it's, it's really something like that. Some of the fruits are coming out really nicely of course but the vanilla and the the wheaty base of this beer come across absolutely beautifully. That's I would go as far as saying that this is perhaps the best nose I've come across from Berliner Weiss. So, Huge thumbs up to uh, to Brewski on this one. If if the taste is anything like the aroma, I can see why quite a few of you guys were saying to me to have a proper go at this beer. Um, and I suppose that's one of the good things about Berliner Weisses actually is that at four percent they can usually have a hell of a lot of um, different flavours to them. And I mean they are a very kind of diverse um, style of beer if you like. They are a very flexible style of beer, I guess you could say as well, or it is rather not they are. Yeah, bad grammar. But um, yeah, a lovely big smooth and sweet vanilla note to this one. A little bit of a white bready wheaty quality. Definitely very smooth in there as well. Maybe a teeny bit of a, a kind of biscuity note coming out of there, which it could be, you know, a little bit of pastry or something like that. But yeah, um, definitely a little bit of a biscuity sweetness in there as well. But the, the aroma in this one really is dominated by that big smooth and sweet vanilla note. Um, on the fruity side of things, um, you know, you can pick out everything there. You can get a little bit of sharpness from the the raspberries. And I mean, for me as a Scot, our raspberries in Scotland are always very, very sharp. I think the Swedish ones aren't quite as sharp and a little bit more juicy. So you can definitely pick up a little bit of the tartness from the raspberries. But the blueberries and the um, the black currants, I think the black currants are sort of forming the baseline of the, the fruits. You, the black currants for me are very, very juicy, but you can smell the blueberries coming in on top of that and just almost giving you the, the darker side of the fruits. Um, it makes it just that little bit more juicy. I think it's really the raspberries that are giving you a lot of the tartness out of this one, but the, the black currants are really giving you a hell of a lot of juiciness. And it's interesting how that flavour, um, or that aroma rather, blends in because it seems a little bit more like the black currants and the blueberries to some extent are more mixed in with the vanilla but the raspberries are kind of sitting there as a little bit of an independent thing. It's it's really interesting to kind of notice that about this beer. Perhaps there's a little bit of a grassy um, note to this one as well. Some people or some brewers rather will um, will add hops into the beer, a little bit of a, Berliner, a little bit of hops in a Berliner Weiss, but of course it's not really a very bitter beer style at all. I think you're usually lucky to get about 5 or 10 IBUs out of these beers. Even a Hefeweizen is only like 15 IBUs or something. But yeah, definitely a little touch of a grassy hoppy character to this one as well. But the focus of course is on that big vanilla note and just how that plays in together with the fruits. Like I say, a lot of juiciness from the blackberries and the blueberries, but the I think it's the raspberries that's giving you that little bit of tartness out of this beer. So I have to say the aroma on this one um, is absolutely beautiful and probably the best aroma I've come across so far from the Berliner Weisse style. So that's a challenge for you guys watching the video. Um, send me some recommendations and give me a beer that has a better aroma, a Berliner Weisse that has a better aroma than this one. I think you'll be hard pressed to do that. But yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Triple Berry Pie, a Berliner Weisse with um, raspberries, blueberries and black currants coming in at 4% ABV with some vanilla as well I should say from Brewski Microbrewery in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, skull, cheers and thank you to you guys for the recommendation. Skull. Oh yeah. Right. Um, first impression of this one then, 
it comes in very sharp at the beginning, but it really just smooths out very, very nicely, actually. So there's a good bit of tartness on the front of your palate and then towards the sides as well. But you've got a very nice smoothness to this beer the further that you go into it. This is this is a really nicely done Berlin of Isa. I can see why so many people were recommending this to me. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, what I would say about this beer, I mean, compared to some of the other Brewski ones that I've had, I've had a good few Imperial Stouts from them as well, and Brewski, well, they are capable of beers that are very kind of complex and things like that. Um, a lot of the IPAs and the, the sour beers that they do, they're very kind of straight up, but they're just very, very well crafted. I think that's a general trend for this brewery, to be honest with you. And, you know, once again with this, they've pulled it off really well. This is probably the best sour beer that I've had from brewery, from uh, Brewski. I wanted to say brewery there. Probably the best sour beer I've had from Brewski so far to be honest with you this one gets a big thumbs up from me and um, if you want to you know if you're really interested in Swedish sour beers it's going to be difficult to um to, to beat this one actually this is potentially one of the best sour beers you're going to come across in Sweden yeah you know if it was like I said earlier where this beer proved to be very popular in, uh, in the folk soul version, you know, it's not surprising that they decided to scale this up and actually get it into Seastemble Agate as well, where all the kind of beer nerds are going to go. Um, this is really, really nicely done. So let's try and break the flavour of this down a little bit then. So middle of your palate, you've got a nice kind of um, sort of bready smoothness in there. It does almost come across as a little bit of uh, a little bit pastry-like. Um, and there is that big thing going around these days of pastry stouts and stuff, so I'm not sure if there is some kind of sugar that you can put in the uh, the malt base as well and get that kind of pastry kind of flavour out of uh, out of a beer but this one really does it almost feels like you've just got a bit of pastry going across the um, the middle of your palate there on top of that and as you move further forward you can pick up some of the white bready wheaty notes but on the as I say the further forward you move there's a little bit of that vanilla coming out the vanilla really starts to dominate the flavor if you like in the um, in the aftertaste it really lingers there in the middle of the palate with just a little bit of that kind of pastry side of the beer and um, that's a really interesting malt base it's, it's it's really a very curious beer this one so again thank you for the recommendation I love beers like this that just make you think a little bit when you're reviewing them But yeah, um, it's just, it's a very simple malt base, but it really does the job. I mean, the further you go into the aftertaste, you might be forgiven for thinking there's a little bit of a kind of biscuity flavour in the middle of your palate there as well. And usually it's the kind of biscuity, brown sugary flavours that cover up the alcohol. But at 4% ABV, when you've got all that fruit and everything else and vanilla in there, you're not really going to notice much of the, the kind of boozy characteristics of the beer. But the malt base, very, very simple and really quite nicely done. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, I think there's maybe a, a teeny bit of earthiness in this. Um, and then you've, there's no real floral character to it, but it's a, it is a little touch grassy around the front edge of the tongue. To be honest, Going by the, the way the flavours come out in this, I wouldn't be surprised if there's no hops in this. So... You know, to me it's a little touchy earthy at the back of the palate and then there's a bit of grassiness there, but um, there's a complete lack of IBUs in this beer. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's no hops added to this, either that or very little or slightly older, like Haller Tower Titnanger or something like that. Um, a lot of breweries choose not to put hops in Berliner Weisses and things. I think this is, I'm, I'm almost convinced, 95% sure that this is the case with that. I don't think there's hops in this beer. But yeah, fruity side of things then, this is where the beer gets really interesting. As I always say to you, when you add fruit into a beer, um, usually what it does is that it will suppress a little bit of the IBUs of the beer and you'll get the fruity side of things um, out around the kind of sides of your palate where you would normally find the grassy and floral elements of the hop. But with this one, it comes out slightly differently. The fruity kind of tartness that you were expecting, the sour quality that you would expect of a Berliner Weisse, that comes out at the very start of the flavour and you get a little bit of it just behind the front curve of your tongue. And for me, it's kind of 
the blueberries and mainly the raspberries to be honest with you the tartness that you get is mainly a raspberry tartness I think and that comes out in the beginning of the flavour um, and some of the sourness of the raspberries it almost like spreads around the back sides of your tongue as well but then the further you go into the aftertaste it's more of a kind of juicy blueberry and juicy kind of black currenty note that you're getting out of this one I think it's the darker berries that are giving you the juiciness in the beer and the the raspberry that's giving you the tartness too. So I mean overall it's it, it's really interesting how that goes together. The further you go into the aftertaste the more the vanilla comes out and the more the um, the more the kind of juicy side of the blackberries and blackcurrants comes out. So yes yeah, it's, it's really interesting how that all kind of pieces together. I love how this beer, um, I love how this beer just mixes together. I mean, it's not the most complex beer that you're going to come across. It's one of these ones that is just really, really well crafted. So big thumbs up to Brewski for this one. I mean, this might well be one of the best beers that I've had from them. I mean, as I say, Conan the Barbarian is probably the one that really springs to mind. Um, and there's a few other of there's a few others that have been really quite good as well. I mean, but Conan the Barbarian, this one, in terms of their sour beers, this one is probably on par with Conan the Barbarian from the sour side of things at Brewski. So that's how highly regarded uh, I think this beer should be. So yeah, you know, hats off to Brewski for this. They've pulled off something very, very nice here. And I can see exactly why you guys were saying, have a go at this one. This is really good. You could drink, you could easily drink that. Um, you could drink that, just, you could sit on a summer's day, sit on the little pier at Helsingborg or the waterfront and just have a few of these. Go into the Sea Stemple Agate, buy a few and sit on the, the waterfront and try not to get arrested by the police. Tell them it's uh, fruit juice or something. But yeah, I mean, this is a really, really nice take on the Berlin of Ice. You'll struggle to find better than this in Sweden. But that said, like I say, uh, Dugas Brewery, Urbo Brewery, Hus Breakerviet, um, Engel Kvartos Brewery, uh, Yemadalen up in the, the north of Sweden. Temple have got some nice sour beers as well. There's some very good sour beers here in Sweden now, so the standard is pretty high, but I think this is definitely one of the best ones that you're going to come across. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say that this is a fairly mid-bodied beer. Carbonation is really smooth. The mouthfeel to this one generally comes across as quite creamy in some ways. Um, I really like how that all just that all just goes together, but it, it's really a very creamy feeling, Berliner Weisse, this one. There is a little bit of tartness to it, but mainly it's a sweet and creamy and uh, slightly juicy, fruity uh, Berliner Weisse as well. So in terms of the malt base then, like I said, very smooth, but still quite light and almost sweet. But the further you go into the aftertaste, it does thicken up a little bit. You can feel the vanilla getting more and more present with this beer the further you go into it. In terms of the IBUs and the hops, like I said, I suspect that maybe hops haven't been used in this beer, but if, if, if there has, I mean, it's, it must only be like five IBUs or something like this, but you've got a lovely juicy, oily, fruity quality to this one, a little bit of tartness there in the beginning, but really the further you go into this beer, the sweeter and more juicy that it gets. But like I said, this is probably the best sour beer that I've had from Brewski so far. I think I've reviewed three or four of the sour beers for you here on the channel, but for me, this is definitely the best one out of all of those. So um, yeah, kudos to uh, to Brewski Microbreggery for this one. This is an awesome, awesome beer, and if you get the chance to try it, I highly recommend that you do. This one is the 4% version, of course. Like I say, there is a 3.5% version from what I understand as well. So maybe that one is just as good, I don't know. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This is the Triple Berry Pie coming in at 4% ABV from Brewski Microbreggery in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. A really lovely Berlin Advisa, and I think you're going to struggle to find one better than this but um yeah let's leave it at that once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know your favorite beers from bruce kiar it's always interesting to hear your opinions on the stuff that i'm reviewing but thank you again for watching make sure you check out my social media and i will catch you guys very soon the triple berry pie a berlina weiss coming in at four percent abv with uh, blueberries raspberries black currants and vanilla from Brewski Microbrewery in Helsingborg in Skåne here in the south of Sweden. Slandja, school, make sure you check out this beer. One of the best sour beers I think you're going to find in Sweden at the moment. 2019. Cheers.